Yo, Inca, you wanna come out here? <laughs> hey, so this is a late night video where I will be recording uh, my team builder and such as normal for the PDL. This is happening later into the evening, so I do probably sound a little bit quiet, and um, yeah. So, here's the deal. We, uh, actually, let me just start off and do this as a regular intro. Hi, my name's Incog, and you're watching uh, the PDL, the Professional Draft League. I'm your coach of the Backs of the Future. If you don't want to be spoiled on what happened at week one, you can just skip right to the battle, or skip like a minute into this video here to uh, avoid that spoiler, I suppose. But in three, two, one, we win week one versus our opponent, Jakeeb, and their Baltimore Bergmites. Uh, very much a dark cry showing. Really enjoyed that game, and it couldn't have gone much better. I feel like we could have played as Potter a little bit better to maybe get it uh, more kills, maybe, but I didn't pick up any, so it's all good. Azu cleaned up the game, and we played a pretty good strategic game. Uh, this week we fight Kirito Gods, uh, and I forgot their team name, which is just, just unfortunate here, but I'm sure if I scroll fur enough, yeah, there it is. Kirito Gods, they have the Orlando Muse, a very nice logo, and honestly, I like that it's Orlando, because hey, man, you know, back in the day, I'm gonna get old here real quick. There wasn't a lot of niggas running around being uh, Magic fans, but hey man, I always like to hear and see teams that are named after teams that you normally don't hear about, so Orlando Magic, really nice stuff. Um, unless you're really old and you remember the Orlando Magic carpets uh, with uh, choice specs, but that's a different league entirely and something in history. Anyways, um, so, hey man, week two. They unfortunately did lose their week one, I'm pretty sure, but I think it was still a close game. Uh, if you are an audio listener, then let me just let you know here. We still have our same team, which is Darkrai, Terrace, Papara, Urshu, Rapid Strike, Gliscor, Azumaro, Fortress, Electros, Petron, and Morgrim. Terra as Papara has Psychic, Electric, and Fighting. While my opponent's team has the Raging Bolt, Terra, it has Kokwavl, uh, Jirachi, Cerulege, Weezengaller, Mammal Swine, Blissey, Septile, Zoroark, and uh, Volbeat. Uh, this is also Terra Septile and Terra Raging Bolt, so going over those. Terra Raging Bolt has Dragon, Terra, Fairy, and Steel. Septile has Grass, Flying, and Rock. Uh, let's start this off correctly. Number one, I don't believe Volbeat's coming this game. As much as a nuisance it could be this game, I don't think it shows up. Um, I also... I'm a firm believer that Sceptile has a pretty interesting game and it definitely could show up. It's like a non-zero chance. Besides that, everything on this team besides Volbeat and even possibly Blissey are very viable options to show up this game. I think that you have a good opportunity to use a Choice Specs Raging Bolt, uh, but I will say from my notes, not having Ice Terra on Raging Bolt helps us so much here. Um, though I will say Dragon Pulse or like Draco Meteor will still probably Oko Gliscor, but you know, that's is what it is. You can't be too, <laughs> you can't get Spideff enough to even try and live that hit anyways. But it is nice not to get like fully destroyed by a super effective move, but just by a regularly effective move. And I mean, I fully expect this to be like more of a volt switching sort of Raging Bolt game till the end game where it can thunderclap a lot of my mons down and then sweep with um, Cerulege or clean up with Quaquavel. I think defensively, Weezing's great here for them, and I think that Blissey, despite maybe everything I've ever said about this Mon, is still really good defensively here against a lot of my team. Prevents something like Petron from going crazy, and Weezing definitely can prevent something like Espothor from going too crazy and other Mons from really doing what they want to do since it has neutralizing gas and can use things like Haze and Clear Smog and such. Um, otherwise, I think, like, defensive Jirachi is fine here. I mean, it could definitely get up rocks here. Mammal Swine is definitely still good here as well with rocks. And also, um, my team isn't exactly not weak to ice, so, or ground for that matter, too. So, hey, very scary. Don't know what Zorak wants to do, but it can definitely still do what my Darkrai did week one and just 
either set up a sub or set up and start going crazy. Subtitles in one of those positions where it needs a specific kind of item in order to really go crazy, but I mean, we'll see what happens. From what I can tell, I'm predicting Raging Bull, Kukwabble, Cerulege, Weezing, Galar, um, Jirachi, and it's really a tie between, honestly, Mamoswine and Blissey right now. I think Subtitles good, but I don't think it's great here. I think when you're fighting things like my Fortress, Petrarunt, and even just to some extensions, if you could see Sap, Sipper, Azumarill ever popping up, and even that, at that point, Gliscor, Subtile has a really hard time physically beating my team, and even specially, it could definitely take a longer time, because the Electros is definitely still a really good tank to a lot of the moves that it gets, so that mod's kind of iffy. Zora could come this game, but I think that's only on the basis that you feel like you lose to a Sprother too hard, and while I wouldn't never bring Terra Fighting here against Jirachi, uh, wheezing and like, and like, I just, it got Galar wheezing, excuse me, and like Terra Fairy Raging Bolt. Um, I still feel like Zoroark doesn't really care. It gets enough coverage to try and deal with me. And it can definitely put a stop to my tracks, but then it also gets kind of revenge by some other mons and really doesn't want to see certain mons in a corner. So, yeah, basically top seven, top eight ish sort of vibe. If we see Zoroark, better for us. If we don't see, like, Quoquavo or Cerulege for some reason, that's even better because those mods are very impactful this game. But let's talk about our team. Um, first and foremost, I don't think we're going to be bringing um, Fortress right now. Fortress would have been nice this game. It's not my seventh mod, but it would have been nice this game to say the least. Uh, still no Morgrim action. I think Morgrim's cute, but not today. Um, and that leaves us with uh, about seven mods. Uh, seventh mod on this team is Gliscor. Uh, Gliscor would have been fantastic this game, but from all the covers that these mods get from random Ice Beam Blissey to Mamoswine to Jirachi to uh, Kukwavo and Cerulege being able to just uh, at least wear it down too much to a point where I have to switch in and they can set up. I didn't find myself in a great position with that mod, and also like Terra Fairy. Or even just purely Terra Dragon, Raging Bolt really doesn't care for me after Terra's, so that's kind of fucked up. The only real mon I can truly like wall off for the for like a good chunk of this game is like Sceptile. Um, so yeah, there's there's so many reasons for that too. But anyways, that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, turning away from that, however, we have our team here. So I did already have this all done and I don't know how you guys prefer for something like this or like the showdown screen leave a comment down below um, first and foremost we have Hershifu punching glove yet again this is another one of those moments where I built something a little bit rushy I would say or not really rushy I built ideas and then everybody has their own comments about them and Cherry was definitely the person who definitely still made the dark cry and Urshifu ideas so let's talk about those um, Urshifu is sub close combat surgery strike swords that this was originally a um what's that thing? It was originally choice band, but we went with this mostly because we can always sub on a good chunk of these mons in all honesty. Uh things like the Mammal Swine, um the Cerule Edge, um and even Blissey if it's just gonna go for Thunder Wave. Um, cause you know, it could be like Choppleberry for some reason and have an insane amount of HP investment to try and live or something. I don't know if it can, if it can't, I didn't count for that. Even something like Thunderclap, like Raging Bolt, uh, out there. And even just like in general, if something's coming in against us, we can sub. And that's very great. Uh, cause SD plus Surging Strikes will basically, Weezing has to be Max Fizz Death in order to live is what I'm saying, basically. If it is, and we don't, and we take the hit, we take the strange team or whatever it is, cool, awesome, dope, but it has to break our sub first, and if it's the switch in after seeing sub, then we get off the SD on it, switch in, and then we can hit it for a fucking a lot of damage, which is great this game, honestly. Um, if it just goes for haze that turn, then that's cool, like, I'll just hit you, I'll just hit the rest of your team for the cycle. Um... But Hershifu uh, is really good at just breaking down this team 
Uh, and we were going to bring Band originally just because everything else that we didn't outpace, like Jirachi, Zoroark, and Sceptile, don't really want to be in against this. But then we are kind of like, we kind of need to be changing at least moves. Like, two, we have to go between two moves here, which is why we have CC and Surging Strike, so better. Darkrai is Twisted Spoon, Side Shock, Dark Pulse, Nasty Plot Taunt. Um, this is the one and the only, hey, I can set up on a Blissey with Nasty Plot and then just start breaking it down. Uh, 252 defense uh, still has a 99.4 or something chance to get to a kid by side shock, which is amazing. Um, if we set up, hey, that's damn near a kill. Um, and realistically, with our speed stat and such, we outpace everything that we need to outpace besides Sceptile, which, I mean, at that point, it is what it is. Um, we don't hit, like, Zorak for great damage, I suppose, but it's not bulky, so Dark Pulse still do the job. Um, we have Taunt. For things like the Blissey going for T-Wave and Rocks and other things. Um, Taunt also helps against something like, uh, I would say, Calm Mind Raging Bolt, sort of. But also Taunt is just good in general to have versus some of these mons. Because if we don't know if we're going to kill them or not, it's better for us not to have that conversation. Uh, everything else doesn't want to take hits from us, so that's really dope. Um, I fully expect to see, like, Cobra Berry Jirachi or something, but... That's nor here nor there. I can still taunt in and prevent a Thunder Wave from happening, which is important. Um, Electros, aka Swimmers. I didn't read Darkrai's name, Reaping So. But uh, Swimmers is Coil, Drain, Punch, Thunder Punch, Sub. Now, I got questions from Cherry and other people as well why this is Sub. Listen, Weezing's not running any speed. Okay, let's go ahead and just drop that here. Weezing's not running speed. I sub on that Pokemon every day of the week. Right, I can sub on a lot of these mods, if we're being quite honest. If I start coiling, there's not a whole lot he can do to stop this mod besides crits. And honestly, that's fine. I hit this team for the cycle with this mod, Dream Punch and Thunder Punch. And we can basically go about our day from there on. Want to avoid getting burned for something like Weezing, which is why we have sub primarily. Um, and it will likely be um, neutralizing gas because we don't really have... I, I, I think it's neutralizing gas. I like Gliscor feels so forced here, so I feel like neutralizing gas is great for them. Uh, and while we lose our levitate, it doesn't really matter. And we can just start setting up and go for game pretty much towards the middle. We could even try it towards like the beginning of the game to get it in. A lot of these mods aren't beating me unless they crit me, so Electros is great here. Um, and in general, this is a good Pokemon to sub up against with Blissey. Because Blissey will probably go for rocks or something else. And once we get up our sub, I mean, what does it really want to do? Uh, we're going to coil and then we're just going to start hitting things. Um, investment was for, I want to say it was for the Weezing. I think it's like a chance to break sub with Strange Steam or something else like that. So that's really nice. Um, so that's cool. And we hit this team really well. That's it. I don't really have many other points to reiterate. Oh, um... It's basically better for us to have this than not to have this because Raging Bolt is a bitch. Um, so we're going to try and uh, go about it like that. I don't want to have to deal with that Pokemon too much. Um, so yeah. Peche Runt. Peche Runt Mochi. With a little square on the screen. Uh, Fizz Def, or Mixed Defensive rather. Malignant, Maliga Chain. <laughs> Recover Parting Shadow, Shadow Ball. Uh, we kept this one the same basically from when I first made it. Um, it's basically our better Quaquavel check and really good against the rest of any physical mons besides like Mammal Swan and Surreal Edge, which isn't that bad in all honesty. Um, we can eat an Earthquake if it's not like Adamant. We can eat a knockoff too. And we get off the Parting Shot and we can go into something else. Pretty simple. Because my team struggles to switch out a lot, it'll be knockoff central so we can just still Parting Shot out at least, which is good. Uh, we equal quality hits for days, weeks on end. Um, that's really nice. Uh, so for reference, did I put notes down? I did not put any notes down for that. That's okay. Um, but I know Quaquavel knockoff is like the primary thing that hurts the most besides Mammal Swine, so it's fine. Uh, Zora can take advantage of this set if it wanted to, um, just by basically setting up in our face or just hitting the shit out of us. Again, if I see it, I see it. If I don't, I don't. Uh, Espothera, this is a really good one. So, this was like Lumina Crash, Terra Fighting Blast for like Blissey. Let me tell you something. 
That Pokemon is so damn fat, so we're just gonna leave it at that. Uh, hey, Calm Mind, Stored Power, Shadow Ball, Psy Shock. Weezing really don't want to fuck with me, and that's really all there is to it. Get up enough speed boost, Stored Power will basically Oko and Shimon this entire team. Um, especially if we can get Jirachi low or dead or Blissey low or dead, but also with Calm Minds, uh, Psy Shock fucking destroys Blissey, so it's fine. Again, Zoroark looks like it's going to be coming here in my opinion. I think it's definitely a good one. Uh, we don't have anything to really hit it with on this set, but that's okay. Um, we can just simply put Switch out or go for Shadow Ball because if we have enough boost, it might not matter. Um, otherwise, pretty standard as Pother for me. Um, it's basically fuck a wee ball, fuck a wee ball. And there's no item claws, so I can run lefty, so that's really nice. We'll probably tear electric in front of Blissey. Jirachi or Zoroark if we suspect it's there um, I'll still tear electric even if it's like not really there It's really dope to have in front of things like the raging bolt so we can eat the uh, thunderclaps a lot better and other moves But yeah Last is Azu. I don't think there's really much to say Assault vest Azu. There's not a whole lot of special attacks with cherry pointed out to me, but in the case of raging bolt um, funny calc alert uh, I don't think this will ever happen but max special attack modest does to uninvested assault vest 62.1 to 73.9. We have 156 invested, which means we probably are going to eat that at least once. And we get off our play rough, which is great. Uh, that would also be like we can get off an aqua jet to prevent it from hitting us, I guess, with that. Um, I'm fully expecting Terra Steel. I want to say, or really Terra Fairy, for being honest here. Terra Fairy looks the greatest into my team if you can distract Petron enough, but who knows what they're going to be going for. And again, Azu's just kind of here to pick off kills and also do a lot of damage. Uh, speed is once again just like Electros for something like Weezing and Blissey. If we can outpace them, which we should, everything will turn out fine. Um, because then we knock off items, we get off damage, you get the whole shebang. Um, if Blissey's not there or if it's dead, Darkrai can nasty plot once and it outpaces the entire team outside of once again Sceptile. And honestly, while we don't hit Zoroark for super effective damage, we still hit this entire team for good damage. Um, so there's that. Basically, we're going to play this game straightforward. My lead is looking like uh, between Electros and Urshifu, just depends on what I see. But yeah, that's going to do it for the team builder portion of this video. And uh, yeah. Thank you guys for watching this portion, and if you got to the end of this, type the word screwdriver into the uh, comments. That'll be good. Anyways, let's get right into the battle against Kirito and their Orlando Muse. Now that I have stopped my shenanigans, let's talk about this match. So in that last clip, you probably saw a critical hit happen and then it just, you know, disappeared. Hey man, uh, we had to recreate this battle five different times, four disconnects and one failed recreation on Showdown. So this is the recreation on Showdown that went fine. So let's talk about this. My opponent Kirito brought Blissey, Raging Bolt, Quaquavel, Mamoswine, Weezing Galler, and Cerulege. Really good stuff here by them because this honestly, I mean, I wasn't thinking Blissey was going to show up, but it did, which was better for me. So let's review the first few turns before we get into uh, what you likely uh, would have never seen uh, if we, you know, didn't know certain things. And I want to be very clear. We disconnected all those times because there was specifically maintenance on the online service, the server service, whatever, at 9.55 to 12 a.m. PST. The specific time zone th that I live in and the specific time frame which we are going to battle. If anybody, anybody at all wants proof of that, I took a screenshot and put it in my server somewhere and I can always fish it out because it was just hilarious that that 
that it happened. Anyways, let's talk about this battle because this battle is certainly a doozy because we tried to get off so many, we tried to get off one thing and then we went to another thing and then we just kinda, you know, ended up where we were. So let's talk about it. First and foremost, I'm just gonna let you know at the bat, these first like seven or eight turns are basically pre-programmed. Urshifu doubles out into Pets Run while we get a, while they get a T-Spike up. We go for a parting shot on the Weezing, expectedly switching out into Mammal Swine, and we go into Electro since we are above the T-Spike. Raging Bolt comes in as we go for Drain Punch, and at this point we do a little bit, and we're like, cool, whatever, it Thunderbolts, thinking we might switch out, go for another Drain Punch, do a little bit, it goes for Draco Meteor this turn, and Terra Fairy, which does 60% to my Electros at his Pedef. We go for a Coil, because we're thinking, oh, maybe he's choiced into it, or he's going to Volt Switch. Turns out he wasn't, so we switch out back into Petron to absorb the, the T-Spike as it goes for another Draco, and we take 33. We then decide to double out into Urshifu, or, well, Parting Shot basically doubling out into Urshifu, thinking uh, Mamoswine was coming in. So it's blind from here. We go for our Surging Strikes onto Weezing, and we're like, okay, cool, whatever, man. We get off a nice chunk of damage there, as you can see. We go for our sub, and it goes for a pain split. So that allows us to get off our SD here, and then go ahead and confirm our kill on Weezing. This is the first kill of the battle at turn 11. So basically, we were playing this out from turn seven or eight. It was blind after that point. So now we're here. This is Avery forgets how to play the video game XD. So I decide to go for a sub this turn or an S I decide to SD or something. I don't remember. Basically, I avoid the thunderclap first. That much is certain. But they go for Thunderbolt. So I'm like, oh, okay. Then I'll go for my and then I die. <laughs> it didn't matter about crit, by the way. I was dying anyway. And we have reached this point. So they do kill Urshifu, unfortunately, but that just lets Espothra in for free. And well, gang, you know what Espothra does. And if you don't, then you should probably tune into some more Pokemon Showdown, Ubers, or you should have probably been there at the beginning of the generation when it was UUBL. And then it just shot right all the way up to Ubers, basically, because, hey, what does this Pokemon do with Terra and speed boost, you might ask? Well, I'll show you. I tear electric and call mine while it goes for a thunderbolt, and that prevents you from getting paralyzed, and it doesn't do a lot of damage. I go for another call mine here as Blissey comes in. Of course, Blissey can't really do too much, so I get all my boosts there. I go for side shock, knowing that there's a two hit kill, what goes for seismic toss, and then I pick up my kill with another side shock because, of course, this Pokemon is disgusting. This is also exactly why I pack stored power just in case for this kind of situation. Cerule Edge is in, I stored power, it is not Focus Sash, so it does indeed die. And you can probably guess that uh, Espothra cleans up with stored power. This is just the tragedy that is Espothra, because you either do what you can with what you have, or you succumb to it. Because my team is all gas, no breaks, I have many a Pokemon that can sweep you, like Urshifu, like Darkrai for first week, and this week Espothra. Who knows who will be this upcoming week for week three, but we'll talk about that uh, next week. Uh, so your Back to the Future are 2-0, and oh, and we are moving into week three on a good streak. We fight Rezzy. I forgot their team name, but uh, I'll probably have it maybe like the matchup on screen. Uh, but it is Dragapult, Gouging Fire, Claude Zyre, Ogre Paw, and a Whale Spring, uh, Cresselia, Swampert, Exedra, Regigigas, and Wigglytuff with Terra, Cresselia, and Claude Zyre sharing Terra Steel and Fairy. Where they differ is their Stab Terra, where Claude Zyre has Ground, Cresselia has Psychic. A very disgusting team, if I do say so myself, but a challenging one at that, as their team has a lot of good offense, good defense, and a Regigigas, I suppose. I don't know if it's going to show up. I don't even know what to expect for that game. But for now, thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and check out all the other coaches down below, including my opponent, Kirito Gods, and all the other coaches, of course, as I just mentioned. Uh, for now, for me, uh, as I like to now say, good night and good luck.